Casey, could you put the, the opening to that last song back up just for a minute? Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. One more verse, one more line. Maybe. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Maybe that could be our prayer today. And apart from you, Jesus, I have nothing. Even if we feel like we have everything, apart from you, I have nothing. And Pastor Joe, it's good to be here with you this morning. Let's start our time off together with a, with a moment of silence and some prayer, and then uh, I'll close us out. Jesus, may the words of my mouth and the, the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you alone. Father, may they be as an arrow that strikes true to the target. Only by your grace. For whether through my words or in spite of my words... Would you receive glory and honor and praise today? You're all we need. Help us to fall into you today. And let it begin with me again. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. Over the last couple of weeks we've been unpacking a sermon series on prayer, inviting us to intentionally seek the Lord each day. First week we unpacked adoration or this, this means of adoring God and, and telling God who God is and praising God for, for who he is and for who we are. And uh, last week as we unpacked the Lord's prayer, or the, 23rd, the Lord's prayer, not the 23rd Psalm, the Lord's prayer a little bit. Pastor Tom invited you to, to come into alignment with the will of God and to know what the will of God is. And remember, the will of God is that we would know God ultimately and that we would be in relationship with God. That's been God's desire from the very beginning. He created us with a plan and with a purpose and he delights in us. And God, God wants to continue to reveal God's self to you. Because when we see more of who God is, we become more like God. And then we take that which we have received and share that with others. Today, as we unpack our last leg of the sermon series on prayer, we're going to dive into intercession. Intercession is just a big fancy word that, that literally means to come and to, to be in between two people, right? Or to take something somewhere. You're coming on behalf of someone else. You know, uh, Many of us oftentimes ask for prayer. I don't need to carry around a coffee cup all day. I can put that down. I don't have to have something in my hands all the time. Many of us come and, and, and ask for prayer for different things. And, uh, you know, I've been guilty at times. Maybe this has been your story too. I've been guilty of telling someone that I would pray for them. And I have the best of intentions to do that. And then forgetting completely about it until long after whatever it is that I was supposed to be praying for happened. Anybody else? Does that resonate with anybody else? The rest of you are what we call saints. I've tried to make a habit recently of, of changing the way that I do things and, and just actually stopping and praying for whatever the situation is right then and there. Maybe you've been the recipient of that. When you bring to me a prayer request or a concern after the service or during the service or whenever it is, okay, well, let's pray about that. Sometimes people are like, oh, yeah, that'd be great. You pray for that, Pastor. I'm like, no, like right now, we're going to pray for that right now. Because I won't remember later. I, I have got the gift of forgetting um, intercession is about bringing someone or something to the throne of grace, ultimately. And, and really, when you think about it, there is no 
greater example of love than that. You have an intercessor that is always doing your bidding. His name is Jesus. He's always bringing your needs and requests and you to the throne of grace over and over and over again. If you miss everything else that we talk about today, if you don't hear anything else from the Lord, know that God sees you, that God loves you, and that Jesus intercedes on your behalf all the time. This summer, uh, well, actually, it's been for a few years now, I've had the privilege of um, being part of Royal Family Kids Camp. Who else has been part of Royal Family? Anybody? If, you, if your hand is not in the air and you are part of Bemis Point Methodist Church, you have been part of Royal Family, actually, in significant ways. Being part of something doesn't mean you're always there. Being part of something means you support it in prayer, you support it through your giving, you support it through your time, right? All of those things are being part of. So if you're part of the church, you've actually been part of that. Some of us have been there. And this last summer was a really special week at camp. Every year, I, I suppose we probably say that every year, don't we? Well, uh, this year was really special. And, and someone came and they brought some gifts with them. And one of the things they brought was this little guy right here. Who else has theirs? Come on. Do you know where they are? Mine travels around with me almost every day. It lives in my little man purse. I had a girl come into Park Church the other day and say, Pastor Joe, why do you have a purse? I said, that's not a purse. That's a European man bag. <laughs> it's actually a satchel. Don't mock me. She goes, that's a nice purse. Carry on. <laughs> She's like 11. Like, what do you know? We don't know anything about man purses. Neither do I. A guy gave it to me, and I kind of like it. It carries my Bible and my, my computer in it. And my little starfish. You know the story of the starfish, right? Man was walking along the ocean, and all these starfish were washed up on shore, and he was feeling bad for them because they were all like, <laughs> dying. And he heard very clearly, well, just, just do take one, and, and he threw it back in the water. And he did what he could in that moment. And if each person did what they could do, Imagine how many starfish would be saved, because it's overwhelming when you look at it in, in the big scope. Well, royal family, uh, they gave these out. And uh, I don't remember if the woman who, who had gotten these for us said this or not, but this little starfish became for me a tangible reminder to pray for the kids that were part of royal family last year. And every time I pray for them, it's called intercession. I'm praying on their behalf. Some of them I know their stories. Others I have no idea what their story is or what their needs are in the moment. But God does. But this little starfish is just a, a friendly reminder. And I don't even know if that was the purpose of it. But it's a little reminder for me to pray. That's the first question I want to ask you is, do you have any little reminders that help you to, to pray for things? If not, I would really encourage you today to start to talk to God about that. Lord, help me to be mindful of praying for whatever it is, right? For me right now, it's those little ones. Now, I got lots of little reminders, right? I got lots of little things that, that kind of prompt me to pray, as we uh, close out our series on prayer, specifically with intercession, I want to give you a couple of resources that might be helpful to you. Um, some of you have asked me about what books can we read to, to study on prayer? What books are, who, what are some good authors that, that write about prayer? And if, if that would be helpful for you, there's a couple that, I, that came to mind very quickly for myself. And uh, Pastor Tom would, would love to give you some resources too, or at least access to some resources. But one of them is... Uh, E.M. Bounds. So E.M. Bounds, and it's called The Complete Works of E.M. Bounds. Now, this is not an easy read. And unless you are living in the world of entire sanctification all the time, you're going to really struggle to read what he has to write because he doesn't hold anything back. But E.M. Bounds' work on uh, The Complete Works, he unpacks what it is to be a prayer and the significance of that and our relationship with God and how that, how that enhances through prayer. Another one is uh, Richard Foster, and he wrote a book titled, wait for it, Prayer. It's not, not real profound, right? He, he wrote a book called Prayer. 
I would encourage you to read Richard Foster's book on prayer also. Another one is Tim Keller. And I can't, the name of the book that I was thinking of has just left my mind. It might come back to me by the end. But uh, Tim Keller wrote a book on prayer also. Those three are, are great works on prayer. You know who else wrote a great work on prayer? Some, did somebody say Jesus? I really hope so. So here's the funny, here's the backstory, okay? So someone had asked me about um, some resources on prayer, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, I started to think a little bit. And then I went to my, my, my friends, who are my phone-a-friend guys. I usually have a couple of people that I call, because they're, they're very well-read, and I'm like, they'll remember the names of the books that I don't remember the names of. And, uh, and I put it out there, and I'm like, hey, guys, and it's my covenant group, actually. And I said, hey, guys, uh, what resources do you have on prayer? And the one guy, without missing a beat, says, why don't you read the Bible, Joe? Thank you, Matthew. That's not helpful right now. He says, no, no, really, I'm serious. Where else would you rather go than the words of Jesus? I'm like, you're really not helping. He says, well, maybe you should read your Bible. I'm like, okay, what other resources do you have? And uh, they shared some resources with me about, on prayer. But, you know, the, the Gospel of Matthew unpacks prayer pretty, I mean, and we walked through that last week, actually, significantly. Well, what about intercession? What about praying on behalf of other people? Today we're going to be unpacking the beginning of the book of Philippians. If you got your Bibles, I'd encourage you to to turn with me there. Over the next nine weeks, you're going to want to bring your Bible. And and I know we we do things with technology so often, right? And we we have our phones, and we have different, different resources available to us, iPads and digital technology. And that is all great. But if I could just invite you to, over the next nine weeks, bring your paper Bibles with you. If you don't have one, it's really fun. Go out and buy a Bible. Ollie's has them, right? Walmart has them. You can buy them at a gas station sometimes. If you can't can't get your fingers on a Bible, come and see Pastor Tom. Take one off his shelf. I don't, I don't. He's not here today, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, He's actually preaching in Gary this morning, but uh, bring your paper Bibles with you, because there's just something about, and, and Pastor Tom says this, right? He loves to hear the sound of the pages turning. You can't hear the swiping. Right? But over the next nine weeks, we're going to dive through the book of Philippians. This year, God uh, helped us to unpack a little bit of how we wanted to teach and what we thought might be helpful for you as a church. And one of the things that we realized was we need to do a little bit better job on Sunday mornings of teaching through the Bible a little bit more. So systematically kind of walking through different sections of the Bible. We're going to start with the book of Philippians. And uh, the book of Philippians, if you've read the book of Philippians, it's in the New Testament. It's one of Paul's letters to a, a, little, a little community called Philippi. And uh, in it, there's a, there's a theme that kind of resonates and carries throughout the whole book. And that has to do with joy. The book of Philippians is, is really about joy. And uh, each week we're going to unpack a, a, another section. And we're not going to just go in order from the front of the book to the back of the book because actually... Uh, it really starts in chapter 2, and it all kind of comes around this image of who Christ is. But for today, we're going to look at the very beginning, and, and Paul does a really good job of revealing to us what intercessory prayer is and how we can come alongside that ministry. So there's a few things that we want to give you on the front end. The first is, you know, intercessory prayer starts with encouragement. It really starts with, with, with how we... How, Paul is encouraging the body that he is going to be praying for. And then he unpacks the work that he's about to do. And I want to give you some practical things in there as well. And then the last thing I want to share with you is the blessing that comes from praying for others. Remember I shared with you at the beginning that 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 really is the purest form of love, isn't it? When you take someone and you bring them to the throne of grace... Uh, two and a half years ago, I think it was, uh, during one of our services, a woman uh, had been navigating, a uh, husband and wife actually, but the husband wasn't here that week, had been navigating some difficult things with one of their kids. And uh, their, their child was young. And I remember uh, watching as the mom carried her daughter, who was sleeping at this moment, and laid her up on the altar. Right here. That's the image of intercessory prayer. Of you taking whatever it is, whoever it is, 
to the throne of grace and trusting that Almighty God is going to work in this moment. Philippians chapter 1, beginning with verse 3. This is where Paul dives right in. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will be faithful. I'm sorry, that's not that translation. We'll carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Forgive me at times, i got to just read rather than... I've memorized scripture in a bunch of different translations. So at times you get the King James. At times you get the New King James. At times you get Joe's paraphrased version. You never know what you're going to get. I'll try to just read off the, off the paper here. That he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you since I have you in my heart. For whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. Paul says, God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer. Wait for it. That your love, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and that you may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Each Sunday morning, uh, I stop at Park Church on my way over the hill if I'm preaching over here. And uh, there's a gentleman who who greets us at the door oftentimes. And he brings me a little note card. And on that note card is a joke. And sometimes those jokes are hilarious and other times they're not. And you tell me which one it is typically. Typically. I laugh at all of them. This is today's. He goes through great lengths. He types them up, cuts out a little piece of paper, sticks it on an index card, and then promptly hands it to myself and Pastor Brandon. He says, with the price of everything going up lately, I got gas the other day for only $1.39. I'm like, hmm. He said, unfortunately, it was at Taco Bell. (laughs) That was a good one, wasn't it? I just wanted to test the flavor of the room for a moment, see where we were going, okay? With that in mind, I want to also do a little bit of teaching just for a minute, and I need to refer to my notes a little bit more here. Um, Sometimes we lose things in translation because we don't understand the cultural context. And uh, as you start to dive into the book of Philippians with us, it's four chapters, it's short. You're going to feel good by the time you get done reading it, especially if you're going through the Bible plan with us. Because right now we're in Job, and it doesn't feel real good right now. Okay? So read the book of Philippians. Read it every day. Or put it on audio and, and let it play to you. Do something. But context is really important. So you've got to do a little bit of study around it also. Context is really important. So in verse 8, this is what it says in verse 8. It says, God can testify how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. So Paul is trying to communicate very clearly that he loves them just like Jesus does and with the affection of Christ Jesus. Well, in some of my study, this is what I found. This is where it gets exciting. Literal translation of Philippians 1 verse 8 is this. I yearn for you all with the bowels of Christ Jesus. Thank you. Someone else processes like I do. I shared that with my kids the other day. <laughs> and Riley's like, what'd you say, Dad? It says, literal translation of Philippians 1.8, is I yearn for you all with the bowels of Christ Jesus. That term, bowels, literally means the upper intestines, the heart, the liver, the lungs. The Greeks, the Greeks believed that to be the seat of the emotions and the affection. 
So Paul is saying to the early church, I yearn for you with the very compassion, the very essence of Jesus Christ himself. And he says, I love you as Jesus loves you. With everything that I am, that is the heart of intercessory prayer. I was part of a ministry called uh, Curex. Are there any other Curex folks around here? No. Okay, well... That was one of the experiences that I got to go into the jail and come out of the jail. It was kind of pleasant, actually. It's a prison ministry, uh, a three-day weekend for residents uh, in the penitentiary system. And uh, we were having our weekend, and I remember very, very clearly, there was a gentleman at a table next to me who was becoming very agitated. And uh, one, of the, one of the other team members, and there's a team that goes in, an outside team and an inside team, the inside team went in and and, one of the, and he, he was escalating in his frustration, the other gen, the, the, the inmate was. And I remember uh, sitting there kind of watching and wondering, and, and they're kind of looking to me to do something. I was young, too. I, was, I, I don't even know if I was 30 at this point. And I'm like, uh, you guys are the experienced ones. This is my first weekend. And this gentleman, without missing a beat, goes, I know how to take care of this one. I'm like, what's he talking about? And he began to pray to intercede on behalf of the gentleman in that moment. And I watched as God delivered this man from whatever it is that he was navigating. That was one of the first times I witnessed with my eyes the presence of the Spirit of God interceding on our behalf and and doing the bidding. The gentleman that he was praying for didn't have faith. But the one who was doing the praying did. And I want to encourage you today. Some of you have been praying for things for a long time. Some of you have been praying for for situations and circumstances for a long time. I want to encourage you, don't stop. Don't stop interceding on behalf of whatever it is. Right? But there's a couple of things that might be helpful to you. The first is make sure that you're praying in accordance with the will of God. Right? And this is where the work begins. Right? This is where we really got to start to discern, okay, God, what are you asking me to pray for? Not just what is my desire for this situation, but God, what are you asking me to pray for? And that's what Paul does in the end of this section. In, in verse 9, he begins to say this. He says, and this is my prayer for you. He's discerned what the will of God is because he says that your love may abound more and more. You remember we unpacked what the will of God is. It's that we would know God and that we would enjoy his company forever. God's desire, his first and foremost desire is that you and I and all of humanity would be in intimate relationship with God. Peter says that God's desire is that none would perish, not even one. That's kind of mind-blowing when you step back for just a moment, isn't it? The will of God is that none would perish but that we would be in relationship, intimate relationship with him. Once we've discerned what the will of God is and and we understand that a little bit more, then we're able to get some insight into the situation. And I don't know what your experience is with this, but oftentimes when I'm praying for people, if they haven't told me what to pray for, thoughts will start to pop into my mind. So I'm giving you a little bit of insight into Pastor Joe's crazy brain, right? If you ask me to pray for you and you don't give me any, any backstory to it, I just start to ask, okay, God, what are we praying for here? How can, I, how can I be an intercessor for this person? And thoughts will start to come to my mind. And it's not usually about how hungry I am or what the bills are going to do. or Right? There are thoughts about this individual and God gives me insight into their life. That's called discernment. And then I start to pray into that. Sometimes, sometimes I'll ask people, you know, hey, hey, uh, would you pray for me? Sure, what would you like me to pray for? Uh, you ever have that look? Uh, I don't know. When people are sick, when they ask us to pray for them, I ask, well, what would you like me to pray for? 
what if the person's desire isn't that they would get better? That's tough right there. What if that's your desire but not theirs? What if their desire is to, to meet Jesus? We've talked about this a little bit recently because we've navigated death with some folks who were just ready to go home. I don't know if it works like this, but I think they felt like when we prayed for their healing that they were being snatched back out of the door, that they were trying to get in. So I started to ask that question, well, how would you like me to, and obviously this is appropriate at times, right? You know, you, you fail your English test isn't a reason to go home. <laughs> but when you're in end of life care and stuff, maybe it is time for us to rely on the goodness of God and the hope of the future with Christ, which is eternal. Intercession. Listening to God for how to pray. Asking others how we can pray with them and for them. Sometimes others don't know what the need is. And we simply come. Do you believe that your faith will be the agent? Because faith is the only agent that does healing, by the way. Healing only comes to the Spirit of God in that moment, right? That's, that's how that happens. Do you believe your faith can heal another individual? If the answer to that question is, I'm not sure about that, or, or well, let's back that up a little bit. If the answer to that question is no, then why do you pray? That's tough too. But if you believe that God will use your faith to intercede on behalf of this other individual and heal that person or reconcile this situation or reveal God's self to this individual, then we absolutely pray into that. Put your finger on Philippians and back up with me to the Gospel of Mark just for a moment. Just, just appease me just for a moment. The Gospel of Mark, the second chapter, it's the very, this is a very familiar story actually. It's one that you've probably read or heard before, or hopefully. If not, we're going to teach on that too then eventually. Uh, but it's right at the beginning of chapter 2, and, it, and the title in my Bible is Jesus Heals a Paralytic. So a man that's been paralyzed, Jesus heals him. And really all we need to look at is verse uh, 3 to 5, just for a moment. It says, some men came bringing to Jesus, that's the hymn there, a paralytic. He was carried by four of them. You can kind of picture this, right? Uh, four guys, I don't know if they were grabbing a hold of his arms and legs, but maybe that's what they were doing. I mean, like we saw during the, the, the pageant this year, they dragged him off by his arm. Or maybe that's what it was like. I don't know. Just as they were carrying him to Jesus. It says, since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof. So not only did they bring this man to Jesus, but they were on top of the house. Now, it's not like a pitched roof like we have, right? a flat roof. And they cut a hole in it. This tells you a lot about what these men believed about the person that they were going to bring this guy to. It says, They made an opening in the roof above Jesus, and after digging through it, they lowered the mat the paralyzed man was laying on. There's our answer, by the way. They weren't just grabbing his arms. Each guy grabbed a corner of that mat, right, and were, were carrying him. Listen to what happens. When Jesus saw their faith, Those guys that carried that mat, that dug a hole in the roof, would stop at nothing to get to Jesus. He said to the paralytic, he said to the man on the mat, son, your sins are forgiven. Not because of anything the paralytic had done. I often talk about this when I teach on baptism, so if you've... Uh, been baptized into the church by myself, we've walked through what baptism is. One of the things that we talk about needing to be present in baptism is faith. Whose faith? Well, if you're making a profession personally, then it's your faith. 
If you're bringing to me a baby or a, a small child, it's not that child's faith. It's your faith in that moment. This oftentimes gets me in a little bit of trouble, but it's the reality. If you don't know who God is and you bring me your child and you ask me to baptize that child, I'm going to tell you yes. Because I have faith. Your faith moves the mountains. Intercession is where that is activated. Something to, that I came across this week that might be helpful for you when praying. The story is of George Raindrop. I have no idea who that guy is. But he wrote a book called No Common Task. Tells how a nurse once taught a man to pray and in doing so changed George's life. He said the nurse's work was done with her hands. He said she used her hands as a scheme or as a reminder for prayer. He says each finger stood for someone. Her thumb was nearest to her. It reminded her to pray for those who were closest to her. Her family, her loved ones, those really close. Her second finger was used for pointing and it stood for all her teachers in school and in the hospital. Those who were pointing us somewhere. Her third finger was the tallest and it stood for the VIPs, the leaders in every sphere of life. If I could just pause for a moment and say thank you. Thank you so much for praying for me. And I know Tom would echo that same statement. And all the staff here at the church, we would echo that same statement. Thank you for praying for us. There have been times when the pressure has been so real and so intense, and the only thing that has carried us through that is you, by the grace of God. Her fourth finger was the weakest, as every pianist knows, right, Sean? And it stood for those who were in trouble and in pain. And she said the little finger was the smallest and the least important. And to the nurse... It stood for herself. Don't neglect to intercede on your own behalf. Back to Philippians. And this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you might be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. As you intercede on behalf, other, on behalf of others, maybe begin to ask the question of God, why am I praying? And as he reveals that answer to you, receive the blessing that comes from bringing them to the throne of grace. Paul starts off by saying, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. You see, when we intercede on behalf of others, the blessing that we receive is joy. God's been bringing a scripture verse to mind the last probably month, maybe month and a half. And he's been driving it home. And it comes from Romans chapter 15 in the 13th verse. And it says, this, it says, may the God of hope, and I've, and I've prayed this over you, Publicly and privately. But may the God of hope fill you with all joy and all peace as you trust in him. Friends, intercession, the blessing in that is that God fills you with joy. As you engage in the ministry of reconciliation. If you're struggling today with with anxiety, if you're struggling today with, with fear, if you're struggling today with being grumpy, let's begin to pray for others. Let's begin to, to, to put the needs of others above our own. Let's begin to be like that mom taking that child and laying them on the throne of grace. There is no greater example of love. William Barclay said, if we love any subject... 
We want to learn more about it. If we love any person, we want to learn more about him. If we love Jesus, we will want to learn more about him and about his truth. Intercessory prayer combines all of those things. So, who are you going to be praying for? Would you pray with me? Jesus, thank you for your church. God, would you give us tangible reminders of of the need to pray? The longing to be your hands and feet here on earth. Executing your will on earth as it is in heaven. Father, may we be attentive to the the finer things so that we can be participants in the greater things. Jesus, let us become smaller so that you might be magnified and, and bigger. And teach us to pray. Help us to be people of faith. Increase our faith today, Jesus. Increase your church's faith today. Reveal yourself to them in in new and significant ways and encourage them in the journey that that we can do this. Not on our own strength, but by the strength and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Father, in faith we pray as you taught us through your Son, Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd invite you to just take a moment and uh, we're going to be quiet for a minute. And we're going to reflect on, on how God has spoken to us, how God has ministered to us. We're going to allow God to prepare our hearts to give back to him through our tithes and offerings. And I'll close out that, that time with the doxology and then the worship team will close out our service together. Let's just be quiet with the Lord for a minute. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. There's a lot of things I don't know, right? Like many of you, I'm hoping that the Bills win this evening. I have no idea if that's going to happen or not. But there is something that I do know. I do know and I do believe that he who began a good work in you, that is, that God who began a good work in you is faithful to see that good work brought unto completion for the glory of God by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord Jesus Christ be before you to lead you, beside you to justify you, behind you to defend you, above you to guide you. But might Jesus, the risen Christ, by the power of God's Holy Spirit, be within you, refreshing you, empowering you to remember those in prayer and to love the hell out of your neighbors in Jesus' name. Amen.